Merry Christmas everybody and big welcome back! I've been kinda busy, I've been celebrating Christmas for three days in a row, so no videos for a while, but what a way to kick things back, here we are with a new card soon in a new year. So installed for you guys today we have a card review but also almost a deck tech video of sorts, or a deck tech fear you video of sorts. Satoru Ume Sava. He has two metal arms, it looks like, some strange tattoos, I, I think there are tattoos up here. He has a really cool look, it looks like some form of demonic Japanese spirits in the background, so yeah, I dig the art. However, I don't think the card is that amazing. It's a free mana cost Demir Black Blue Generic Human Ninja Legendary Creature, so this could easily be your commander for a 2-4. And whenever you activate a Ninjutsu ability, look at the top 3 cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest into the bottom of your library in any order, you can only trigger this ability once each turn. But it's also, and this is the crazy part of his text, each creature card in your hand has Ninjutsu Black Blue Generic 2, a total of 4 mana. I mean, this is literally just a sneak attack in the command zone. And we also have the mono green Elvish Piper. And in my opinion, the Gruul are somewhat of the tricking creatures, tricking cre big creatures from your hand into play colors. But I guess you could argue that this is how Demir are doing a sneak attack. This is the Demir version of a sneak attack with Ninjutsu. But I honestly think it would be way cooler if this was a Gruul commander with Ninjutsu still. Imagine an ogre that is like having a leaf in front of his head and tricking big other ogre dragons and other cool gruuly things into play. But let's actually move forward and talk a little bit about what is the biggest and meanest thing that we can ninja into play. And that is Rasakef, the foul blooded. And it will actually flow pretty functional here, because you want to have a bunch of really low CMC creatures with various evasions of swords flying, unblockable and other cute tricks that you can swap position with, with your ninja commander getting the big demon into play. Lore wise, I guess that the big Rasekev demon have possessed this little tiny thing and is now booming into play exploding in gore and all that and boom suddenly there was a big demon inside that little whatever thing it possessed. And that's cool and all, I mean this is a great trick of getting Rasakif into play, but I don't know if you know about Kali of the Vast, it basically already exists and this is doing the exact same thing but better. Now you could argue that you're gaining blue by losing white and red, but yeah more color is usually the better, but this is getting Rasakif into play without paying any mana for it, compared to paying 4 mana for it. You could also argue that uh, Satoru Mesawa is able to get things into play that aren't just dragon demons and angels, but in the end Rasekev is basically the best thing you wanna trick into play. I mean if you're gonna play the Demir guy as your commander, you're gonna fill your deck with a lot of tutors so you can get the big demon to your hand consistently, a lot of really low CMC1 creatures, so you have a lot of targets for swapping and a lot of things that you can sacrifice basically tutoring for fast mana and fastest demonic consultation or tainted pact and win. But once again this is the same thing Kalia is doing, she's just doing it with a different outcome, she's just tutoring for different Mardu stuff instead of the Demir fastest consult stuff. But with full honestly, I actually think that Kalia is the better one. Well playtesting could prove me wrong, but I'm gonna go with Kalia here. But sure, I guess it's worth to mention that you could trick into play a Void Vinover or a Nessahal Primal Tide. And they are definitely some really cool and big explosive hate bears. Or well, Nessahal isn't really a hate bear, it's just a really big grindy value creature card that is really hard to get rid of. Now I've actually seen Void Vinover in action quite a few times, and I gotta say it's not really taking over the game, Nessa Hall on the other hand is actually capable of taking over games as you're drawing so many counter spells and you can sit there and really control the entire board state. So I don't think tricking these big things into play or tricking various variants of these into play is taking over the game or warping the meta, it is just a decent thing a, a lot of other commanders are already doing in various ways. For example, I would love to compare Satoru with Yoda the Archmage Eternal, 
that is pretty much doing the exact same thing, but for five mana instead of four. Sure, you have to pay one mana of each color, that is a little bit more trickier, but you also get access to all color identities. Now I have actually built a Staxi Stompy Yoda Archmage Eternal that is tricking in Void Venowers and other really big hate bears, Rasakefs, on turn 4 consistently. And I gotta say, that isn't busted, that isn't taking over the game, it is just something that is kinda decent and works sometimes, but it's kinda mediocre. And after playing that Yoda deck for a while, I realized just doing the exact same thing, but with Kenrith as the commander instead, is way better. Just get into your graveyard somehow and reanimate him for his 5 mana cost black ability, and you will also have him as the commander instead of Yoda, and he's just way better in general because he can draw cards, put counters, gain life, and etc. And in the end, the same thing can be said here about Satoru Umesawa. He said Kenrith is probably just better. He will do the same thing, but with one more mana, one less blue mana and just more generic mana. All you need to do is just discard creatures down to your graveyard. That's it. That isn't that tricky. Sure, he costs 5 mana instead of 3 mana, so there is a small advantage here. But you get access to all 5 colors and you can win with infinite mana. It just opens up more doors. So as a finalized review, I don't think he's that great. But what about Ninja Tribal? I don't think that's great either. There is an appeal for it. Whenever you activate a ninjutsu ability, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest in the bottom of library in any order. So this is gonna trigger once each turn, and it's gonna be like a card draw thing, like an anticipate thing, or actually it goes past anti-card draw effect, so that is good. However, in general, most ninjas aren't that amazing, so I don't think you wanna build that deck. And if you for some reason wanna build that deck, why don't you just build Yuriko instead? She actually plays a few ninjas that have been proven worthy. But she's also not really a ninja tribal deck. She's more of a Demir card drawing value engine commander deck. While Satoru will be a ninja sneak attack deck. I've actually played against a few ninja tribal Yuriko decks and in my opinion all of them are more or less casual decks. Well, there are some tricks where you, like, transform all your creatures into ninjas. Those actually kinda almost work in CDH, but it's not really what Satoru is gonna be able to do. I also don't really wanna compare these two because they are very different. Yuriko is more like a card engine value commander, a control deck of sorts, while Satoru is more like a Kali of the Vast commander in Demir with Ninjutsu. I do think we're gonna see some CDH action with the guy, because I do think some people wanna try out the Rasakev Ninjutsu thing, or Rasakev Possession thing is more of how I would like to look at it, but then I think it's just gonna die out. This is probably not what a lot of you wanted to hear, but it's my honest opinion, and I think it's the honest truth. Not all commanders are... CDH viable of sorts. Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong in this case, but who will see? Take care, guys, and once more, Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Player's website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.